I just wanted to do a brief supplement here. Uh, we're just getting out of the time of the judges, a time of great idolatry. People are going after various false gods. This will continue, of course, through most of the reign of the kings up until the Babylonian captivity. And so I wanted to read this. This is from, again, the Institute Manual for the Old Testament. Old Testament Student Manual, Genesis to Second Samuel. This is Enrichment Section F, beginning on page uh, 245 of the manual. And this is the uh, Part 7, the more well-known false gods of the Old Testament. I thought it would be interesting. I, I found this interesting. And I'd like to share it with you in this so that we get an idea of what kinds of gods the Israelites were going after. So first, we have this is there are four listed here. We're going to go over them one at a time. Ashtoreth. This is the name of Astarte, the goddess of the Zidonians, and also the, Philist and also the Philistines, whose worship was introduced among the Israelites during the period of the Judges, and was celebrated by Solomon, him by Solomon himself, and was finally put down by Josiah. She is frequently mentioned in connection with Baal as the corresponding female deity, and from the addition of the words and all the hosts of heaven, it is probable that she re represented one of the celestial bodies. The most prominent part of her worship consisted of libidinous orgies, which Augustine, who was an eyewitness of their horrors in Carthage, describes with such indignation. Her priests were eunuchs in women's attire and women, prostitutes, who, like the Be uh, Beaderes of India, prostituted themselves to enrich the temple of this goddess. So, simply put, Ashtoreth was a fertility goddess that main form of worship was through sexual orgies. And the, priest, the priests and priestesses would, uh, I mean, as a priest would, they were eunuchs, they were castrated and dressed like women because you couldn't have male priests there. And the women were all prostitutes hiring themselves out to get money for the temple. This was Ashtoreth, or Ashtoreth. She was a fertility goddess. She was the highest female deity in the Middle East, in, in this area. Uh, not a very moral practice. Anyways, let us continue to Baal. As you know, we are doing this alphabetically. So, Baal. The supreme male deity... <coughs> the, Sorry, the supreme male divinity of the Phoenician and Canaanitish nations, as Ashtoreth was their supreme female deity. Some suppose Baal to correspond to the sun and Ashtoreth to the moon, others that Baal was Jupiter and Ashtoreth Venus. There can be no doubt that the very high antiquity of the worship of Baal, it prevailed in the time of Moses among the Moabites and Midianites, and through them spread to the Israelites. In the times of the kings, it became the religion of the court and people of the ten tribes and appears never to have been permanently abolished among them. Temples were erected to Baal in Judah, and he was worshipped This he was worshipped with much ceremony. The attractiveness of this worship to the Jews undoubtedly grew out of its licentious character. We find this worship also in Phoenician colonies. The religion of the ancient British Isles, islands much resembled this ancient worship of Baal, and may have been derived from it. Nor need we hesitate to regard the Babylonian Bel, or Belus, as essentially identical with Baal, though perhaps under some modified form. The plural Balaam is found frequently, showing that he was probably worshipped under different compounds, among which appear the following. Let us pause there for a minute. The supreme male and female deities, Ashtoreth was in essence Baal's consort or wife. They weren't exactly married, but it was the same kind of thing, much like Zeus and Hera in the Greek mythologies. And as it points out, Baal worship is among the oldest that we can find records of. I think, in, in as far as I understand, the only older uh, idols worshipped might be the Egyptians. But Baal's influence spread everywhere. The Phoenicians were a great maritime people. They sailed everywhere. They did sail into the British Isles. So it is not unlikely that their influence was there and that it at least influenced it. 
In addition, as it says, the northern when the two kingdoms of Israel divide, the northern kingdom becomes a very much a Baal worshiping people, and until they're destroyed, they've never they never really get rid of it. Baal was the deity, I believe, that Gideon, when he went and destroyed the uh, altars of his uh, the uh, the grove of his father, it was a altar to Baal that he was destroyed. And you know, it even says with, with Ashtoreth. You remember, it wasn't until the time of Josiah, who was the last great king, about fifteen twenty years before the Babylonian captivity, it wasn't until then that Ashtoreth worship was put down permanently in uh, Judah. And the same thing is true of Baal. They were both still being worshipped even in Judah until the time of Josiah. So here are the compounds that we see of Baal. See, number one, Baal Berith, meaning the covenant Baal, mentioned in Judges, the God who, who comes into covenant with the worshippers. So this is very much a uh, false god, but still imitating the covenants that uh, the, the true covenants we have Be Baal Zebub meaning Lord of the Fly worshipped at Ekron mentioned in 2nd Kings right, uh, one other note the word Baal that name actually means it translates as Lord or Master Baal Zebub Lord of the Fly 3 Baal Hanan now this is an interesting one it says the name of one of the early kings of Edom, mentioned in Genesis and Chronicles, as well as the name of one of David's officers who had the superintendence of his olive and sycamore plantations, mentioned in Chronicles. These were men. These weren't false gods. These weren't idols. These were men bearing the name Baal Hanan. Because the name Baal is just a name. It is a name that was actually fairly common throughout the Middle East. There are many place names that bear the name of Baal, because that's just what it was. As the influence of Baal increased in Israel, the use of that name in place names fell out of favor, especially after the Babylonian captivity. A lot of things changed. But we see that the name is applied. There are people and places that bear this name. It's not just the god Baal. So, now, for Baal Peor, meaning Lord of the Opening. Or in other words, for example, for others to join in the worship. So, we have already referred to the worship of this God. The uh, narrative in Numbers chapter 25 seems clearly to show that this form of Baal worship was connected with licentious rites. In other words, Baal Peor, this was a, another uh, sex orgies to, as a form of worship. But it wasn't just that. It wasn't just the priests indulging in this. It was, as it said, Lord of the Openings or the invitation for the worshippers to join in. This was anybody worshipping Baal could join in on these orgies. Anyways, let us continue. Dagon. In the Old Testament, Dagon is a principal deity of the Philistines worshipped in Samson's time at Gaza, at Ashdod, and at Beth Shan in the days of Saul and David. The true origin of this god's name is lost to antiquity, and even his precise nature is uncertain. The common idea that he was a fish deity appears to have no foundation in fact. The idea seems to have been influenced solely by the outward similarity between Dagon and Hebrew dag for fish. The fish-tailed divinity on coins from Arvad and Ascalon is linked with a targetus and has no stated connection with Dagon. So a targetus is another local deity, but not one mentioned in the Old Testament. And he is the fish deity of the, of the area, not Dagon. So the common Hebrew word Dagan, meaning grain or corn, may perhaps itself be derived from the name of the god Dagon or Dagan. It is thus possible that he was a vegetation or grain god. In other words, probably a god of the harvest and not a fish god, as is commonly supposed. But other than that, we really don't know anything about him. He features prominently in the story in Samuel chapter 5, when the uh, Philistines captured the Ark of the Covenant, and they put him in the Temple of Dagon in Gaza. It is also, I'm pretty sure, it's a Temple of Dagon that uh, Samson destroys in the end when he causes the 
when he knocks the pillars over and collapses the temple, that was the temple of Dagon. But other than that, we don't know anything about him. Finally, Molech. The worship of Moloch is generally cited as an example of the cruelest and most abhorrent idolatry known to man. Moloch, called also Molech, Malcham, Milcom, Baal Melech, etc., was an Ammonite idol. It is mentioned in Scripture in connection with its cruel rites. Mentioned in, let's see, Leviticus, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, Amos, Zephaniah, and Jeremiah. They all make reference to Molech. Kiel and Delitzsch described the idol as being represented by a brazen statue, which was hollow and capable of being heated, and formed with a bull's head, and with arms stretched out to receive the children to be sacrificed. While the worship of this idol did not invariably include human sacrifice, it is certain that such hideous rites were characteristic of this abominable shrine. The authors last quoted say, From the time of Ahaz, children were slain at Jerusalem in the valley of Ben-Hinnom, ben and then sacrificed by being laid on the heated arms and burned. Many authorities state that the sacrifice of children to this hideous monster along long antedated the time of Ahaz. The offering of living victims was probably the climax of enormity in connection with this system, and it is said that Tophet, where it was to be witnessed, was so named by, from the beating of drums to drown the shrieks and groans of those who were burned to death. The same place was called the Valley of Hinnom, and the horrible associations connected with it led to both Tophet and Gehenna or the Hebrew for Valley of Hinnom, being adopted as names and symbols of future torment. Gehenna is actually a word that is frequently translated in the Old Testament as hell. I believe it's in, yeah, the Old Testament hell is usually taken from the word Gehenna. This is the most horrific form of idolatry known to man. In Jerusalem, apparently, they would kill the children first and then burn them, so that was somewhat of a uh, mercy there, but the climax of Molech worship was to place living children on the outstretched arms of a brazen idol, and the idol was heated so that when the child was placed on the arms, it would burn alive, and they would beat the drums to drown out the shrieking and screaming of these children. When the scriptures reference letting your children pass through the fire, this is what they're talking about. This is talking, it is talking about the horrific, just grotesque human sacrifices of children, of babies. I am going to leave that there because uh, it's somewhat fascinating to read about these ancient gods, but at the same time, hearing the details of Moloch, even just, not even details, just the, uh, the overview of Moloch is, ugh, woohoo, kind of gives you a shiver. So I'm going to leave it here. Just wanted to share what so, some brief information about these four main deities that the false idols that the Israelites worshipped.